I'm Lisa Haysha. Welcome to the Legacy Interviews. Today, I am interviewing the great, iconic Shirley Jones. It's such an honor to be here because I grew up with her. Partridge Family was one of my favorite television <laughs> shows, and I just admired her and always wanted to be a mom like her. How cool would that <laughs> be to have all these children and sing and just, because all the families that I grew up with, the mom and dad were very serious and their kids and disciplined, and it's like, she's the mom that everyone wants. So it's so wonderful to have her here, and she's so much more than that. Academy Award winner, nominated for Emmys and Golden Globes, and just an interesting life, and she pulls no punches. She's very honest. She just wrote a book, and or not just, but you wrote yeah. a book recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just this, this past year. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that book just gives you an insight into a whole other aspect of her that you would never even imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's what I love. That's She's an nice. onion. You keep peeling it away, and <laughs> yeah. there's like, oh, wow, and then there's that. Look what's there. Yes. Yeah. So thank you yeah. for agreeing to doing this interview. I'm delighted. Nice to see you again. Yes. It was wonderful running into you, yeah. and I'm like, oh, my God. She's somebody that I would love to <laughs> interview That's just nice. to keep you your uh, legacy alive because yeah. I think you're such a great role model. And why I think that is because you're not one note. You're very... Um, Full human being. That yeah, took I guess. Chances. I guess I'm. You know, um, I've always loved everything I do, and and yet, you know, most people in my business say, that, well, that's the number one thing in the whole world for them. It never was for me. I love what I do, and never would have wanted to do anything else. But I remember when I accepted the Academy Award, my husband said, I said, this is this is the best moment of my career, and my husband said, why didn't you say it's the best moment of your life? I said, because it wasn't the best moment of my life. Having my children and having my life the way it's been has been the best moment of my life. Talk a little bit about that. How did you create a life that you could sit here and say that? To tell you the truth, I didn't really create it. I mean, I, I, when people say, what did you do to make it happen? What did you do? Who did you talk to? Who did you meet? I, I, there wasn't anybody. I mean, the only two people that I could say uh, were responsible for me being able to have the singing career that I had was Rogers and Hammerstein because I was on my way to college to become a veterinarian. I didn't care about singing. I could sing. I thought everybody could sing. It was a natural, natural talent for me. I was the youngest member of the church choir at age six, you know, mm -hmm. in my little town of Smithton, Pennsylvania. And I loved it and I performed in high school and did all of that, but I thought everybody could do that. And I wanted to be a vet because I was an only child and I raised everything from, you know, skunks to birds to snakes to you name it. You know, I, that, I, it was the love of my life. But I was on my way to college to do that and stopped off in New York City with my parents, which was a summer holiday. And I knew a pianist that I'd worked with in Pittsburgh and I called him. And he said, come on up, we'll sing a couple of tunes. And he said, listen, Rogers and Hammerstein's having open auditions for anybody that wants to sing for them. They had three shows running on Broadway at that time. What was your age at this and time? I was 18. And their shows ran so long, they had to keep replacing chorus people every couple of weeks, you know. Now, I barely knew who they were. You know, I remembered seeing Oklahoma at the big, th one big theater in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and loved the show, you know. But I wasn't sure who they were. I was very young and wasn't into that quite yet. And I said, oh, I, I, I couldn't do that. I've never signed. And they said, he said, come on. Anyway, I waited in line with everybody else, got up and sang for the casting director. And he said, Miss Jones, what have you done? And I said, nothing. <laughs> he said, could you wait a few moments? Mr. Rogers happens to be across the street rehearsing his orchestra for Oklahoma, which was about to open at City Center and go out on another tour. And I said, well, I guess so, you know. I didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't sure what I was doing and why I was there. Well, I sang for him and he said, could you wait? <clears throat> I'm gonna call Oscar Hammerstein at home, <clears throat> excuse me and have him come and hear you. I said, well, I guess so. And my pianist said, Shirley, I hate to do this to you, but I have an airplane to catch. It was some sort of holiday weekend. And he said, I can't stay. And Roger said, never mind, we'll think of something. Well, I waited for about a half hour, and down the aisle comes this tall gentleman, and he said, Miss Jones, do you know the score of Oklahoma? I said, well, um, I might know some of the music, but I don't know the words. And of course, I'm talking to the lyricist, you understand. Mm -hmm. And he said, never mind, I happen to have a score here. 
I said, but Mr. Hammerstein, I have no one to play. My pianist had to leave. And Rogers said, we have the full city center symphony across the street. Now, I'd never heard a symphony, seen a symphony, let alone sing with one. They took me across the street. I held the score in front of my face. And I sang, oh, what a beautiful morning, Oklahoma. And people will say we're in love with the city center symphony. And three weeks later, I was in my first Broadway show, South Pacific. And you weren't groomed for this? Your Nothing. parents weren't pushing you into Nothing. showbiz? You didn't no. take dance classes took, and music you know, classes your whole life? I took singing lessons, you know, when, as I said, uh, when I was in high school. I started actual singing lessons in Pittsburgh when I was about 12 because everybody that I sang for said, you've got to, mm. my mother, you've got to have her have less lessons. She has an incredible instrument. So I did that, and I, as I said, there was a place called the Pittsburgh Playhouse where every summer when I was in high school, I would go and do shows took dance, took acting, took, you know, just at the Pittsburgh Playhouse, which they're rebuilding downtown Pittsburgh now, and I'm on the, I'm on the board, and so I'm helping them do that. Um, so that's all, I, that's all I did. Now, uh, South Pacific was three months. I went in, into another Rogers and Hammerstein show called Me and Juliet, and they gave me the role of Juliet, which was a featured part, and I had one song, one solo. Went to Chicago with the show, and while I was there, they sent me to California to screen test for the role of Laurie in the motion picture of Oklahoma. And that's how it all began. So you see the flow. Yes. Amazing. And one thing after another one thing without after trying. Another without trying. So how did you Amazing. meet Jack? Well, I, I did the movie, okay, which took about nine months in Nogales, Arizona. Came back to New York and uh, had an apartment there with another actress friend of mine from Pittsburgh. And Rogers and Hammerstein put me under personal contract. I was the only person ever put under contract to them. I was never under contract to a movie studio. And so we did, I did Oklahoma under that contract. And they said, Shirley, we're sending a production of Oklahoma, stage production, to Europe. It was kind of a salute to France program, and they were going to be in Paris and Rome and Germany. And they said, we'd like you to play Laurie in the show. And the original uh, director that had directed it on Broadway in 1942 was directing this. And uh, I said, oh, wow. I'd never been to Europe. I said, how great. Sure. So the first day of rehearsals, we rehearsed in New York. And my friend that I was, my, was living with was a singer-actress. And she was in the show, too, which was fun, nice. And she called me. She had to go to the dance rehearsal. She was more a dancer. She said, Shirley, uh, have you met your leading man yet? I said, no, why? She said, oh, you are, you're, he's drop dead gorgeous. She said, wait till you meet him. I said, I'm not thrilled with handsome men because most of the time they know they're handsome and they're not very interesting. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's really, that cliche goes both ways. Exactly yes. right. Anyway, I got to the theater. And, of course, he was sitting on one end of the stage, and I was sitting on the other. And we, we were reading the show, you know, for the director. Um, and he got up, and he walked all the way over to my chair, and he said, hello. He said, my name is Jack Cassidy. I said, I, uh, he said, I know who you are. And he said, I just want to tell you that it's a pleasure, pleasure to work with you. And I saw, yes, he was very handsome, but I saw something else. I saw a kind of a sense of comedy, a sense of... You know, he was bright, interesting, not just a handsome guy. And that's what I saw right away. So the looks didn't, didn't do it for me. Then, anyway, we, we rehearsed there. We went to Paris. And my first night in Paris, he called me and he said, can I take, and he was married, by the way. And he said, can I take you out on a date? I said, I said, you're a married man. He said, no, 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 he said, I'm your leading man. He said, I'll, he said, I'll, I'll take you to the Eiffel Tower. He said, you know, and we'll have some champagne, he said, and some uh, escargot. And I said, oh, I've never had either one. <laughs> so he said, anyway, we did that, went there, and it was wonderful, wonderful. He told jokes. He was funny. I loved the humor, you know. He was funny. He was bright. He was very theatrical. I mean, he'd done so many shows. You know, he was in a show called Wish You Were Here. Mm -hmm. He was the star on Broadway. And a lot of other stuff, so a lot of summer stock and stuff like that. I don't know. He was 10 years older than me. And um, anyway, we, we walked home across. We were staying on the left bank in Paris. 
walked home, a little hotel called the Splendide, as I remember, and took me to my room, and I'm standing outside the door, and he leaned over and he kissed me on the cheek, and he said, I'm going to marry you. I said, what are you talking about? I said, you're married. He said, I know, but I'm going to marry you. And that was the first date. From then on, we went to Rome, went to part, I didn't get to Germany, I got to Rome, did, did Paris, did, did Rome. And then R&H called and said they were going to do the movie of Carousel, and they wanted me to star in the movie of Carousel. So I had to fly home, and my understudy took over with Jack there. But so I, then how soon after did you guys well, get married? I was up in Booth Bay Harbor, Maine, doing mm -hmm. the, the movie, and I, I, you know, because I said to him, you're married. He said, I know, but I'm getting a divorce. I was in Booth Bay Harbor. That's when it took so many months to make movies, you know. And I was there for, I think, six months. And <clears throat> every day he'd call me. And finally he called me and said, I'm divorced. I said, you are? And he said, yes. He said, as soon as you get back, he said, you know, um, we'll get married. Well, I was there for about nine months. I came back. And um, we both got into a show um, together. Um, was it now? Um, it was done in, in, uh, in, at, at the, on the Harvard campus in Massachusetts uh, at, the th at, the little, at the theater there. You know, it was a wonderful production. It was a, oh, I can't think of the name of it now. Um, anyway, when we were there, he said, we're going to get married here. And that's mm. what we did. And we got married, and we, we had a matinee that day. We got married after the matinee. We had a show to go to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How romantic. And, yeah, I know. Doing what you love, exactly, and it's all together. Yeah. Then he had a son, David. That's Cassidy, right. He had yes. a son, David. And I remember the day of the wedding, um, David called him, and his ex-wife uh, called and was not happy about the whole thing, because David, I guess, was suffering. And mm -hmm. it was, it was, you know, she was very upset and all of that. But, and I think that... In many ways, that's probably partly what, what, what caused a lot of problems with David, too, you know, because Jack was never, um, he was more a father to our sons than he ever was to David. He was on the road all the time. He was a young man. And, uh, you know, and he was a ladies' man, as we well know when mm -hmm. you read the book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, and uh, I think that was a, a part of the problem, even with David, you know, because David was a very sensitive young boy. Very sensitive. And when we did Partridge, he, he couldn't have been nicer to work with. I adored David. I mean, and he, he was great with his brothers, too, you know, when they yeah, were little. What a strange thing that that happened, that you worked together, because it wasn't <clears throat> coincidence. Or you no. saying David has to take this part, or no, I won't do it. No, as a matter of fact, I, I, was, um, I, was, I was the first cast yes. in Partridge, you know. And the writers and the director came to me and said, Shirley, how do you feel about your stepson, David Cassidy? And I said, why? They said, well, we're thinking about him, you know, for the role of, uh, um, what is it, um, names I told you, I forget. Mm -hmm. um, of, um, anyway, the, the boy's role in, 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 in the Partridge family. I said, well, Was I think it'd David be wonderful. Uh, I don't no, remember. Uh, uh. I can't think of his first name in, the, in Partridge. Uh, I can't think of it. And I said, he'd be great. He'd already done a Broadway show. Uh, and he'd already worked with Jack in a couple of things, so I knew that he was, well, and he sang beautifully. And uh, I, th I said, I think he'd be great. And they said, well, good, we want to know how you feel because we want to make sure it's okay. I said, of course. Well, they were going to screen test him, and I walked on the set that day. And he turned around and he saw me and he said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm your mama. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my said, God. You are? And I said, yes. <laughs> he said, no. And I said, yes. And I said, you're going to be great. And that's how it happened. And he was cool with that, too. Oh, yeah. Because you guys were connected, oh, yeah. No, we, we, that's, we were great together in the show. So what's a challenge that you've had early on or that you overcame? Was there anything, a point in your life um, where? Well, you know, I think the biggest, well, you're talking about <clears throat> a, ch a challenge in my career or a challenge in my life. I Either mean, one. Um, the biggest problem for me was, was divorcing Jack. I mean, that was very, very hard. Jack was truly the love of my life. I mean, he was, you know, everything to me. We had children together, and, and you know, Marty, of course, is now. I mean, Marty's the best thing that ever happened to me. But Jack was my first love, you know what I mean? And when that started to happen, and he was, 
you know, seeing other women and the whole thing. I mean, it was a big, big, big disappointment in my life. A big, because I, as I said, I came from a small town. When people got married, they stayed married, you know. And I, yes. and I, and I adored him. I adored him. I mean, I would have done probably anything for him. And if you read the book, I did almost everything that he wanted. Yes. And so, even if it was against, that's your, exactly yes. right. Yeah. So that was a big problem for me, and I, I, I just. Uh, I thought, oh boy, I remember when he decided to leave and, and, he, and he said to me, file for divorce, file for divorce. I said, why, why? File for divorce. He said, I don't want to hurt you. And he left, he packed up and he left. And I remember that day, I got all the scrapbooks that we had, had made together. I put them all out on the dining room table and I sat there looking at all of the pictures taking some out, throwing them away, take, keeping some in the books, you know. Um, I thought, this is the last time I'm going to look at these. I'm, I just want to make sure that, you know, they're there. So that was a very difficult time for me, very difficult. Career-wise... Um, How did you get over it? Well, actually, I, I, you know, I started to kind of date a little bit, which didn't really interest me, to tell you the truth. Uh, but I dated a couple of guys, and and uh, you know nothing, nothing big. But it was fun, and I figured, well, this is, and um, and you got the kids, I assume. Oh yeah, yes. oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Especially and, at that time. And he would come mostly. Jack was never a great father. I mean, that's it was not his thing either. <laughs> you know, I mean, he he was thrilled. You know, he wanted a, he wanted a daughter <laughs> desperately. He mm -hmm. never got one. Um, but Ryan, my my last son. You know, Jack was then more at an age where he did appreciate uh, having a, a son, and so Ryan was became sort of his favorite. The, you know, Sean and and David and even Patrick, they got the worst of him. You know, Ryan got the best of him. He would come and pick Ryan up and take him places and stuff like that. You know, so Ryan has the best memories of Jack of, of all of them. Um, but then um, I met Marty Ingalls. Is what happened. I. I went to, there was a painting over the wall over there of Ryan and a, and a dog. And this woman, I saw her paintings and she only painted children. And I loved her work. And um, there, there, on, um, uh, what's his name's lawn, was having a, a showing of all of her paintings. And um, I decided to go and view her paintings. And I took Ryan with me. He was about seven or eight then. Took him with me. And we looked at all the paintings and everything, and I said, oh, these are beautiful. So I, she was there, and I talked to her, and I said, I want you to paint my dog and my, my son. She said, absolutely. You know, Well, I'm waiting for my car, right, leaving the, the grounds, and this car drives up, and this guy comes running out and knocks me right over onto a chaise lounge. People come running over to pick me up, and he said, oh, I'm sorry. He said, oh, oh, and he looked at me like, like he was looking at a, a some kind of I don't know what. <laughs> I, he said, "I'm sorry." He said, "My name is Marty Ingalls." I said, "Oh." I said, "Hello." I said, "I'm Shirley Jones." He said, "I know." And he said, "Oh, I'm so sorry." He said, um, "He said it's so nice to meet you." And he stared at me like he was looking at some kind of I don't know, you know, a miracle or something. Right. You know, it was kind of a yeah. that that kind of stare. You know that that when and. Anyway, so that was, well, I went home, and that following week, I started to get phone calls, one after another, it was him. He went to the William Morris office and paid $15 to get my phone number from a secretary and called me at home. <clears throat> he left messages, mostly, and I never called him back. Finally, he got me on the phone, and he said, oh, oh, I, I, I've been calling you. I said, yes, I know. I said, what is it that you want? And he said, oh, no, no, I don't want anything. He said, I, I just, he said, I just want to talk to you. He said, I just want to know what's your favorite color? Uh, what, what, what's, what's the best thing you ever did? Do you like animals? You, and he went on and on and on and on. I said, hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> I said, why are you calling me? I said, are you calling me to ask me for a date? Or are you calling me to find out what my whole life is about? He said, well, I guess I'm calling to ask for a date. I said, okay, I'll go out with you, I said. And that's how it started. 
<laughs> so you weren't scared of going, who is this stalker? And well, he came and picked me up mm. in a motorhome, okay? He went to all the famous restaurants in Beverly Hills that he knew that I loved and got a dish from each one of them and put him in the motorhome and drove us to the beach. He did that prior to picking you up? Mm -hmm. or? Prior to wow. picking me up and drove us to the beach. And we sat, talked and talked and talked, had the dinner, ne nothing more than that. I said, why are we going to the beach and why am I in a motorhome? He said, well, I figured we'd have time to talk and be together. He said, I wanted you to have the best food that you, that, that you liked. You know, that was the first date. Well, from then on, it was, you know, he did everything that he could to. I mean, what was his job at that time? He was, he was a comedian. You know, okay. He was, he was, oh yeah, he was, you know, he played Vegas. There's pictures of him, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, in Vegas with everybody. And, um, and he'd done, well, four or five movies, I guess, too. Okay, so you connected in. Broadway. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 oh yeah. And <coughs> the thing that I found out about him, which I adored, was that he was funny. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything that happened in the area or around was a joke. I mean, he made up. And it wasn't just it wasn't just like a joke. It was based on what was going on, you know. And and he was hysterical. Everything he did made me laugh, you know. So I thought, well, this is kind of fun. And he, from then on, he would come. And every time he came, see, there's something that I, that I didn't realize about him is that he was terrified of heights. He was terrified of. Um, being in a place where he couldn't view his car at this time, he was terrified of a lot of things. And I got to find all those things out, you know. But by the time he started therapy and drugs and things that he needed, then, then it turned around. Oh. Um, yeah. So how long did you date before you married? Um, well, I, I had to, you know, get a divorce from Jack and had to wait for that. And, and you know, I wasn't I wasn't sure, you know, my kids and everybody else yeah. and everybody around said, Shirley, are you crazy? He's crazy as a loon. I said, yeah, I know he is. But I said, you know what? It's kind of nice to have somebody he's crazy. He's my crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's, and yet he was very, very good about money, very good about that. I mean, he was, yeah. you know, a real, s saved everything, was very good about that. and. So you felt he was a good partner. Yes. Yeah. Exactly right. A good That's balance. What I felt. Yes. And seemed to be very good with my kids. Mm -hmm. Although you know he made jokes with them, and that was you know I forget the, they had a few names for him in the beginning. Sean, the, the oldest, wasn't thrilled at all. But Patrick and Ryan, you know, got to know him well. And Sean stayed stayed away from him for quite a while. But everybody's back now, so. And, uh, but well, it lasted, so. Yeah, exactly. that's right, exactly. <laughs> it was like, okay, she's not going to get rid of him. That's right, soon. that's exactly yes, right. Yes. I'm sure that's, that's what Sean said, mm -hmm. basically. And but it, sometimes that's what it is, opposites attract. Yeah. And, you know, that's nice. Well, there was no doubt about it, that's for sure. I mean, because everything he did <laughs> was so different than anything that I'd seen anybody do. And I thought, you know what, this is, he makes life interesting. And he's funny, mm -hmm. I mean, about everything. He still is, by the way. It's the thing that's kept me married to him for 37 years, is that I never know what he's going to do next, and yet I love it. Yes, <laughs> you know? of course, yeah. I love it. And he's, he's still funny. His humor is hysterical. Yeah, I've just been around you two a couple of times, and just at the yeah. event that I met you at, the Merv Griffin yeah. event, he was hysterical, yeah. and yeah, today. Oh, yeah, and we, but, you know, we, we do things that now, even more so, and he, mm -hmm. now he says, you know what? You're getting funnier than me. I'm not happy about that. <laughs> and I am, too. I've learned a lot. Yeah, you're picking up on that. Uh, exactly right. What would you say your pr proudest moment is? Has My proudest moment? Mm -hmm. um, ha it has to be, um, well, it has to do with my children. I mean, you know, uh, everything that they've done. You know, I have an Academy Award that I'm sitting right there, by yes. the way, in back of you, uh, that I'm very, very proud of. I mean, I mean that was, that gave me a great deal of good feeling that I am in the right business and I'm doing the right thing and I love what I do. But, you know, I was much more proud, you know, seeing my, my, my son uh, get, you know, football scholarships to every school and major college and, you know, around and here, uh, reading the first book that my, um, or script that my son Sean wrote mm. and 
Ryan, who's my youngest, uh, and was having more problems than anybody, now is probably the top guy in the, in, you know, in the, in the family now. So I'm, they make me so proud and so thrilled to have given birth to these guys. And they're good fathers. Good Did husbands. you want a girl? Yeah, but you know, yeah, I, I wanted one because Jack did m more than anything. I would like to have had both, but the more boys I had, the more excited I was. <laughs> <laughs> and easier if you have three boys and let them all. I was just going to say, yes. that's exactly that made right. your life easier. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Made my life easier. And I, as I'd heard from everybody that had daughters, they were d more difficult to raise. Or just one daughter with the boys and they're beating up each other, exactly. fighting. That's and right, just, yeah. yeah. So interesting. I'm yes. Thrilled to have. If you could do one thing over again, what would it be? Let's see if I could do one thing over again. Um, hmm, I'm trying to think. What would it be? So I don't think there's anything I would do over again. I mean, I read I something about you. Of, I've read a lot of, about you. Moment. What about not divorcing Jack? Well. I would never have gotten a divorce, but he wanted a divorce. Would I you have remarried him? I don't know about that, no. If you never met Marty, do you think you would have remarried him? I don't know. You don't know? I, I'm not sure. I, I, what I do know, though, I probably would have waited a long time to marry Marty. But you know, he died right yeah, after that. Yes. So, and I probably would have waited, yes, I, I would have waited. Um, so there's nothing that you regret or that you think, God, I made the wrong choice. What about the Partridge family when they said if you did the Partridge family, you would kill your film movie career? career? exactly. Yes. Are you kidding? It was one of the best things I've ever done. I got to stay home and raise my kids for mm -hmm. almost five years. Uh, and they were school age then, and it was just the, the that greatest That is not a typical fun. answer. I know. Of an Academy <laughs> Award winning actress. <laughs> career is everything. I know. No, but, yes, but that's, but that's yeah. the point. It's never been everything to me. Because it just happened for you. It's yes, not something it that you happened. wanted to do since you Absolutely. were a kid and striving for it. And no. it took you 30 years to get no. your Academy Award. It didn't. And it didn't I mean, yes. I'm thrilled and very grateful for everything that's happened to me and feel very fortunate. That's for sure. But it's not. I mean, you know, my family was always more important to me. And but I'm thrilled with the business I'm in. I mean, I, I think I'm not sure I would like to have done anything else, to tell you the truth because I was always able to sing, always loved performing, but um, it wasn't number one in my life, you know, so. What were your parents like? Well, they were, my father, <coughs> we were in the beer business. This little town of Smithton, PA, population 800, had a brewery that my grandfather built called the Jones Brewing Company, and the beer was called Stoney's Beer. It's still in, the, the brewery is, is there, it's, but it's no longer in operation. But the beer is still being made at another at Rolling Rock in Pittsburgh. And my grandfather was called Stoney Jones. And uh, my grandmother lived to be 97. Grandfather died at 52 because he had a leg removed. Um, but as I said, I was an only child. But all the family lived close. My grandmother had eight children, four boys and four girls. And they all lived in these, they all, they all were in, took care of the brewery. My father. Um, went around and sold the beer. He was the youngest of the, of the boys. And I would, because I was an only child and very close to my father, uh, he would take me with him. I was in more bars at six, seven, eight, nine <laughs> than any young, young person had ever been in. And you never drank. You're never an alcoholic. Or no, never I drink, abused though. alcohol. I, yeah. I, I started, you know, I have, I have a drink every, every, uh -huh. every day at five o'clock before my dinner. But I was never, no, I'd never, I never, I, my grandfather, this is funny, my grandfather, I was about five, and my, we lived in my grandmother's house. She had a huge 18-room uh, house, and we had half the rooms, and she had half the rooms, because uh, my grandfather died, and then we, we moved in there. But before he died, he was in a wheelchair. He was, had one leg removed because of uh, uh, diabetes. And <clears throat> my cousin and I, she was the same age as me, we were in, in, in the kitchen with him, and he said, listen, I got something for you. And he said, get up, sit, sit on the sink. He said, I have a bag of jelly beans in one hand and I have a shot glass full of beer in the other. He said, if you drink the beer, you get the jelly beans. And we're five years old. Well, my cousin downed the beer, had the jelly beans, and I went, <coughs> <laughs> and I didn't get the jelly beans. <laughs> oh, but you tried. <laughs> but I tried, exactly. Mm. You know? but. 
was a wonderful way to grow up. I mean, I had... How, do, how were you the only child back then, a small I, town? I think my mother, my mother tried. I, I mm -hmm. asked her that, too. But I, she did try, but um, it just never... She, as she said to me, it just never happened, Shirley. It just never happened. And, and I know that... Uh, but when I had Sean, my firstborn, oh, my father was ecstatic, you know, to have a boy, a first grandchild. And how old were you? I was... Uh, Let's say I married Jack when I was about 22, uh, about 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's young. Yeah, not you know yeah. good timing back then, but now. <laughs> yeah, young. Jack and I were working together a mm -hmm. lot. You know, we were in Pittsburgh doing a show, and my parents had just bought a house. They just left my grandma's house, bought a house sort of downtown Pittsburgh, and uh, and took that took my son my son there, and my f my father was ecstatic. I'd put, put him in, into bed for his afternoon nap, and one little cry, my father would go, no, no, I'll get him, I'll go. I'll, I said, Dad, don't. He did, if, to leave him mm. alone, he'll go back to sleep. <laughs> so you're close to both your parents. Yes. Yeah. More oh, close to nice. my father than uh -huh. my mother. But, but my, father, um, my father, my father died, you know, you know, young, a doctor's accident, believe it or not. <laughs> he had lung cancer. Mm. They were all heavy smokers then, you know, and he had lung cancer, and went and had a lung removed. I remember I was in Florida then with Jack doing our night, we had a nightclub act that we toured with. And um, she called me, she said he's, he's, he was terrified of hospitals, terrified. And I talked to him, so I said, Dad, you gotta go, you gotta do this, you'll be fine then. So he did, and he, he went in, had the lung removed, and what happened was he was, the doctor that did the surgery, was a major surgeon, uh, had to go to another hospital to do other things. So he. He put him in charge of a, like an intern, you know, to, uh, for the after. And my mother was in the room with him, and the intern came in to examine him. And um, my mother said to the intern, "He looks a little bluish, you know." And the intern, he said, "No, he's fine. He's just fine." Well, the other lung was filling up, and he drowned. How old was he? Fifty-two. Oh my God. Fifty-two. That is tragic. Yeah, fifty-two. Anyway, but at least he got to meet your kids. Only Sean. Only Sean. Mm. Firstborn. Mm -hmm. And uh, then my mother, uh, my mother who never drank anything in her life. I mean, you know, the Jones family drank, but it's mostly beer and never did. For some strange reason, started to drink. You know, it became, she was devastated, started to drink. And she met a man who was, a bigger drinker than anybody I ever knew, and they they married. He he had money, you know, more or less, and they moved to Florida. And he had a, a motel that he ran there. Moved to Florida. Well, she started drinking nonstop, and um, it killed her. I mean, she died at 62, and it was you know it was everything in her body was just leaving. And when I went down there to, with my two aunts, her sisters to sort of clean up and do everything, uh, I found bottles everywhere, in drawers, under the bed, you know. And she had never had a drop of anything, you know, before that, so. Mm. How did that affect you? Well, I was, you know, I lost both my parents relatively yeah. young, you know, so. And, uh, you know, I was, I was devastated that they didn't live longer because, you know, I, and they were thrilled. The only thing that I was happy about is they did get to see my success in the business, yes. and they were thrilled. You know, they were just thrilled at what happened with me, and, and, and very so unexpected. Forth. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> like, exactly right. Very unexpected. Because you weren't living in L.A., so being they were, groomed yeah. at the studios. Yeah. Was, That's right, and they were yeah. thrilled. And I remember they came out to Hollywood, and they were thrilled that I was I was living in a little apartment in Westwood, and uh, when the, the premiere of Oklahoma, they had a wagon, you know, that drove up to the theater. I think it was the Pantages. And my father was in the wagon, driving Aww. the wagon, and my mother was there, you know, so it was really great. What does, made you decide to write a tell-all book? Um, well, you know, they, Simon & Schuster came to me and said, would you be interested? And I thought to myself, if this was 10 years ago, or even longer than that, I would have said absolutely not. But I'm 80 years old. If I'm going to do it, this is the time to do it. I said, yeah. Would you do it if your parents were still alive? Probably. You would, okay. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I would have told them everything anyway. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. So you have that kind of relationship. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah. So. And what did you gain from writing the book? Um, did you learn about yourself? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, to, I yeah. did. I, you know, things coming out that mm -hmm. I, you know, kind of maybe put aside in a way as, as you do. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, yeah. All of a sudden, it was out there in the open again, and I thought to myself, you know, well, you know. People are going to find out things they probably never expected from me, but I don't care at this point. I don't care. I didn't do anything wrong. I did everything mostly because I loved the man I was married to, Jack Cassidy, mm -hmm. was the reason for almost everything that I did. And uh, that was the basis of it all. It was my love for him. You know? So you're a very loyal woman to your spouse. Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that comes first. Yeah, being a mom and being a wife, right? Exactly. Over any other decision, yes. or even sometimes over yourself. Yes, interesting. It is. Mm -hmm. So, how is that being such a strong person and having seems like your career sex, um, your career sex? Because <laughs> I'm <laughs> the book. <laughs> My career <laughs> <So>, in sex <laughs> <laughs> kind of go hand in hand usually, but when. With a career well, I was like always yours, married. You know, I was never not married. I yeah, mean, but usually the, women become divas, or they yeah. have the Academy Award, and they become narcissistic, and it's all about me. And it seems like even when you got married, you're like, no. it's about them, and it's about the family, and it's about yeah. the family unit. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and that's how come you're been. close to your kids, and that's yeah. why they're okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. Always. What What do you think that is, and why do you think that's so hard for people to? I don't do? know. I mean, I, I don't know. I I think. Part of it was the way I was raised, you know, living in a small town of 800 people mm -hmm. and having, even though I was an only child, it was a big family unit. As I said, my mother had, my grandmother had eight children. We were all there. I had aunts and uncles and cousins everywhere. So it wasn't like I was a little lone kid, you know, growing up. I was around a lot of, a lot of relatives and a lot of the, like sisters and brothers that they were to me. And um, that became the number one thing to me. I mean, I wanted to, I wanted to live that way. I wanted my children to live that way, and uh, that was number one. Now, the fact that show business didn't lead you into those kinds of things easily, I mean, yes. obviously. But I don't care, and I love my work, too. And the interesting thing is I would be going, when <coughs> Jack and I were married, we, our first house was in um, Bel Air, um, Moraga Drive, as a matter of fact, and I would come home from work and doing a big movie or a big television show, and walk in the door and he'd say, well, sit down, tell me what happened, I'll get you a drink. I said, no, I want to see my kids. I don't want to talk about the day. I don't want to be asked any questions about the day. I want to be with my kids. I don't want to talk about it. And I never would. Mm. Never discuss what happened that day. That was past. Yeah, now, now you want to play with your kids. You want to yeah. be here yeah. now. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Well, what do yeah. you want your legacy to be? My legacy? I don't know. I'm not sure I have a legacy. <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> you do. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I would like my, my children and grandchildren to respect me, not just because I was, you know, won an Academy Award or was in show business, but respect me as a person. I would like my legacy to be that I had a good sense of humor, you know, which I, I believe in completely. That's why I'm married to this mm -hmm. joker that I married. Um, all of those things, you know, that I was a good mother, good wife, you know, good person mostly, more than anything else, you know, so. Thank you so much. Thank you. That is wonderful. I love hearing that from an Academy Award winner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's good. Mm -hmm.